Welcome back to State of the Union. The 2024 Veatch Stakes race is already in full swing. More than a few up-and-coming Republicans are signaling they would be very happy to serve on Donald Trump's ticket. One of them is my next guest, who is just back from a trip to the southern border, a place she describes as a war zone. Joining me now is South Dakota Governor Christy Noem. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you and two dozen other Republican governors wrote a letter expressing solidarity with Texas, urging the state to use every tool and strategy, including razor wire fences, to secure the border. A lot of people interpreted that to mean that you think Texas should defy the Supreme Court and stop federal agents from removing that razor wire. Do you think Texas should do that? Should they defy the Supreme Court? Texas should stand their ground. Uh, they should enforce their state law and go back to the constitutional rights that they've been granted to protect their state sovereignty. And that's what so many of us as governors are offended by, is that Democrats were threatening to encourage the president to uh, activate our guards in order to get them to stand down and not protect our state. So it is a dangerous situation. It is a war zone at our southern border. Uh, I'm so proud of what Texas has done, proud to stand with them. I've deployed my National Guard down there three separate times already, and we'll do what we can to help them support and defend their people. Um, it is uh, the inhumanity of the policies that are happening right now is pretty striking, Dana. I mean, you just, you see, women suffering, uh, the drug trafficking, the human trafficking that is happening because of these open border policies. It's inhumane and it needs to stop. So on that note, what we're hearing from even some federal agents is that uh, they are kind of frustrated because the law is antiquated and we'll get to that in a second. But that mm -hmm. what they are doing is that they're sitting there and they see migrants, human beings, if they're in Mm -hmm. uh, drowning or in uh, in trouble, they're on the other side of razor wire and these people can't be saved. Are you concerned about that? You have the Texas Department of Public Safety that is pulling people out of the river, giving them CPR, bringing them back to life because the cartels are forcing them across that river. Uh, I talked to one mother uh, who had just gotten into the United States and had been um, taken into custody by National Guard and also by Border Patrol. But she had been in Nicaragua, had been hold, told that America is open, please come. She brought her daughter, her six-year-old daughter, and was facilitated through by cartels and said where she was so mistreated was in Mexico, that she sat in Mexico for three months and was put through horrific work conditions and terrible conditions for her and her daughter for three months before they then brought her across the river and forced her across into a dangerous situation. So... Uh, yeah. The people that I see saving lives down there is the Texas National Guard, the Texas Border Patrol. I'll tell you, the, the Border Patrol uh, that works for this federal government doesn't approve of Joe Biden's policies. The people in this country don't. Nobody thinks that what's happening at the border is the right thing to do. And they know that the president has the legal authority now to take action. He could stop this today. He doesn't need to wait for a bill to pass Congress. He doesn't need to wait for this bad bill to be codified, which yeah. it shouldn't I, be. I want um, to get President, to President Biden could take action today. Go Governor, I do want to ask you about that in a minute, but just to uh, mm -hmm. put a button on the, uh, the letter that you wrote and what is going on with regard to this, to the razor wire. Uh, you said that you could be willing to send South Dakota National Guard troops down to the mm -hmm. border again. We heard from your colleague in Oklahoma, Kevin Stitt, that the situation could lead to a force-on-force -force conflict. Congressman Clay Higgins said the feds are staging a civil war. There is real concern that things between Texas and the federal mm -hmm. government could turn violent. Are you worried about that? Well, that's why I went to the border on Friday. Um, I went there to see with my own eyes what was going on and recognizing that that I am, as governor of South Dakota, I'm commander in chief of my National Guard. That's a heavy responsibility that sits on our shoulders. We have the same responsibility for those families and those soldiers that the president should feel, feel for our military and how he engages them. Uh, so we don't know where this will escalate. We don't know what the president will do. We don't know how he'll try to manipulate our soldiers and if he will even defend our country uh, from this invasion that is happening. So that's why I went there. Um, I'm all in to protect our state sovereignty. I deal every day, Dana, in South Dakota with the effects of this open border. We have those Mexican cartels that have a presence on my nine tribal reservations where those communities are suffering mm -hmm. from
from the drug trafficking and the human trafficking that's going through my tribal reservations where I don't have any jurisdiction. Uh, I can't go there and help bring peace to their community. I can't help protect them from these so, Mexican cartels. So are and you they worried are about violence in South Dakota, facilitating unrest? Are you I worried am about concerned the about violence because people in South Dakota live with violence every single day? Are They're you worried about violence on the border between and my tribes have asked state forces, National Guard forces, well, first Texas of all, forces, and feds? I what I, what I do as governor is I start looking at the long-range effects of every single decision and what I'm prepared to do. So that's why I went to the border on Friday was to look at there could be a violent situation, but there also could be areas where we need to take legal action as governors to protect our states. I'm willing to put all of that on the table to make sure that we're protecting the freedoms that we've always had ever since this country yeah. was founded. That's so, my responsibility and why I get up every single so day. So I want to go back to what you alluded to, which is... Uh, what's happening in the United States Congress and the Senate in particular, you went to the border, you call it a war zone, and now you have in the Senate mm -hmm. a bipartisan deal uh, with new border and asylum restrictions. President Biden says the law would give him emergency authority to shut down the border, and he said he would use it on day one, quote, for everyone who is demanding tougher border control. This is the way to do it. If you're serious about the border, pass a bipartisan bill and I would sign it. Should your former Republican colleagues in Congress support that deal? Why doesn't President Biden take action today? I mean, today can be day one. Uh, he can immediately announce that he's reinstating the stay in Mexico policy. He can immediately announce that he's going to refocus on building a wall. He can do those today. I listened to Nancy Pelosi talk earlier. She's been in Congress for decades and has talked about immigration for decades. And what has she accomplished? We have a president that has all the tools that he needs to protect our country today, and he's refusing to do that. So well, to look at Congress and expect them to pass a bill when they failed for decades to do this and then to say we have to accept this poison pill of a bill that it, it essentially codifies illegal immigration. What it would do is put into statute that people can now come here illegally uh, and is just a terrible bill that I think President Trump is exactly right. It should not pass and, pu and push President Biden to take action because he has he, all the federal laws that he needs today well, to keep us safe, to stop the drugs that are coming into this country and killing us. We have children dying every day yeah, he, from fentanyl poisoning. Yeah, and uh, we have children I, I just wanna, every I just single day jump that are in, being Governor, trafficked, and, and President just say, Biden can take action and it, stop it. I want to jump in and say that uh, we do have your fellow Republicans who are working on this bill saying that the proposal mm -hmm. would have had almost mm -hmm. unanimous Republican support if it weren't for Donald Trump. I want you to listen to a little bit more about some uh, from mm -hmm. some Republican senators. The question is, do you want to get something that will help us stem the tide of humanity coming across the border and drugs, or do you want to get nothing? I just reject the idea that we should reserve a, a, a crisis for a better time to solve it. I think the best thing for the Republican Party to do right now is try to work with Democrats. So, again, these are not moderate Republicans. These are very conservative mm -hmm. Republicans, including your colleague just to the north of you from North Dakota, saying that Donald Trump is wrong mm -hmm. to oppose this deal. And he's doing it for politics because he thinks it helps to keep the border chaotic and not give Joe Biden a win. And that is language and casting aspersions that they do not have the knowledge and the facts to speak to. The fact of the matter is, is that when President Trump was in the White House, he secured our border. He started building a wall. He had policies in place that didn't create the chaos that we're seeing today. So you can say a lot of things and talk a lot of talk, and U.S. senators are really good at spending a story to make themselves look good. What I would say is that I'm, I always look for someone who's willing to take action. Yeah. And um, President Biden has all the authority he, he needs to take action today. Well, he can make one, a decision, call one more a press question conference on this. 10 minutes from now and announce well, he's one more, just to, just to kind of stay push back on that notion. We'd be better off. Governor, because you were in the House, you know, and you just mm -hmm. mentioned it. This issue has mm -hmm. been stalemated mm -hmm. because of politics for decades. And maybe mm -hmm. he does have some uh, abilities, but the asylum process and uh, and the detention process, I mean, it is, it is a mess. 
So why not at least fix that? Why not take mm -hmm. yes for an answer? I think that he would have the ability to fix that, a broken immigration policy, if the president could show that he was acting in good faith. Make an announcement that, that you're changing your policies, you're reallocating resources, and going to start protecting the United States of America, and you'd have Republicans uh, coming down to the White House asking to, that, to be partners on fixing our immigration policies. Instead, what we've got is this partisan bickering back and forth and no solutions while people invade our country. Can we've I just... had almost 10 million people come into our country, and we've got a lot of people that have been on the terrorist watch list, dangerous criminals that are coming into the United States who do not love us, that we're allowing to enter our country. It's an unsafe situation, and the president can be the one who stands up and shows leadership at this time. Change your policies, build a wall, Governor, secure the border. Governor, and then President let's Biden fix the is negotiating. Policy, but we he don't didn't want to, to do any of this. One to do the other. He's negotiating because this is what Republicans but wanted him the, to do. So, again, why not take the, the W? What, is he, why not what take has he the done? Win? What has he done? He's, he's done nothing as far as actual policies and actually using the tools that he has. I sat two days ago with people that work for him that said, this president is tying our hands every single day. He does not let us do our job. This president, we work for him, we work for the federal government, and we hate it. We yeah. hate our jobs and we hate what's happening to this country well, because he again, will not keep us safe. Again, there, there are lots of reasons why the immigration system is completely broken. One of them is mm -hmm. that the United States Congress, which is supposed to make the laws of the land, has been completely uh, frozen mm -hmm. on this for decades. Governor, thank you so much and co for coming on and talking about this very important mm -hmm. issue. Appreciate it.